So what are your thoughts on fighting uh, Marcus Brown on a Broner and Pacquiao card? Uh, he's the best guy available. He's a pretty, pretty, pretty tough fighter. So. What about the card in general being on a big event here in Las Vegas? A regular day, the job. Does Does Marcus Brown remind you of yourself at any point? Because you, he he's twenty two and zero, and he doesn't. But he's been waiting for the big fight, and now he finally got one. Like you were waiting for a while for your shot. Uh, nah, not really. We're different. I, I started boxing later. So I turned pro when I was 26, so it was 10 years ago. How does, how does age uh, play a role in this fight? He's, he's 28, you're 35, but they say in higher weight classes, the prime's older. So you're, you're not... You're, you're, like I said, I started late. Right. My body, I, feel, I take care of my body. I feel young. Uh, I feel like I'm improving still, so age won't be a problem. Just the uh, advantage do you want to take him to deep waters in this fight? Is that a, a, a big part of the plan? And I only ask that because your, your conditioning's become a real strength of yours in the late rounds, and he's only been 12 once or twice. Since uh, Saturday night. Is, 20, Saturday. is 2019 going to be a busier year for you? I know you wanted to fight again last year, and ended up, it's almost like last year being in January, but you plan on being a little bit more active? Definitely. I would, I would love to fight. At least, at least three times. And you have the, the WBA interim titles on the line? Yeah. So, would you want to fight um, Bivol later, being that he's the, the full champion? Is that your... Or anyone on the other channel. Right now, I'm just focusing on what's in front of me, and that's my problem. Is there any fights that you, like, really, are really targeting? Like, number, like, your number one choice? Like I said, I, I, I don't want to disrespect no opponent. You can't overlook nobody in boxing, so I'm focusing just on Marcus Brown right now. After that, I'm ready for anyone. You know, you've had, you've had titles before, and uh, you're, you're a veteran now. Uh, is, it, is it easier for you to get into the big fights now than it was when you were younger because of all the experience you've had being through this? Yeah, I mean, I have a great, great promoter, so, you know, that helps me getting all the big fights, but how to handle the big fights, of course. I got a lot of experience. Have you had any contact with Adana Stevens, these people at all in the way? Yes, uh, I've been talking to his, uh, his family's wife a little bit, so yeah, we've been praying for him, and uh, I'm glad that he woke up and uh, you know he's, he's doing a little bit better now. So, uh, they say he's talking now a little bit. Yeah, and great to hear. I'd love to go visit him soon, maybe after the fight. Do you think the you and Marcus Brown, you guys steal the night and have the best fight of the night, action-wise? Possible, possible. He's a, he's a talented fighter. I got a lot of experience. I always come to fight, so... Do, do you think the fact that you've been in wars like the Gale and Stevenson would help you if it turns into that kind of your experience? In those Definitely. Yeah. I didn't really take no punishment in those fights, so... It helped me, so... You know, I've been there, I'm battle tested. He, he hasn't been tested yet, so we don't know how good he is, we'll see. What do you think of him when you watch him? Is he a pretty good fighter, you think? Yeah, yeah, he's athletic, he's skillful, he's a good boxer. You never, you never know, it's a little different to fight on a, on a prospect slash contender level on a world class level. Just a little while ago, it was Andre Ward, Kovalev, and Stevenson. What do you think of the division now that it's kind of like the names are starting to change a little bit? Yeah, I mean, that fight is Kovalev is still there, but uh, Alvarez, Bivo, Vozdik, Vivian, I got some great fights. What do you think of Vozdik's performance in that fight yeah, against Stevenson? Really, really good, but I thought it was really close. Maybe Stevenson was winning the fight. I think, uh, I think it's also not just for the WBA and but I think the WBC silver title or something like that yeah. is online, but that will put you in position to fight Gavazdik yeah. next. Yeah, I'm already mandatory. So this was the only fight that was available. Right you know, you, you being from uh, Sweden and uh, you were at the uh, hockey game the other day, uh, this is you know, like your community now. Uh, is there talk about you becoming, uh, going into the NHL now? What do you think of that? <laughs> Nah, that's not really my thing. <laughs> you could be an enforcer out there. <laughs> if there's only fighting, then why not? All right. Hey man, you have like a always have like a perfect calmness about yourself, man. What's your secret to like your your own like little zen or whatever you want to call it? I don't know. That's just my personality. I'm confident. I don't need to, you know, 
talk shit or brag about everything. I'm, I'm just confident. You are a, a poster boy spokesperson or something for a, uh, is that like a vitamin supplement or something that's big in Europe? Uh, what can you tell us about that? Rep and nutrition. Uh, we haven't launched in Europe yet, but. Um, but where is it headquartered? Here in, here in Las Vegas. Here in oh, Las in Las Vegas. Vegas. Okay. Yes, sir. So we got an amino uh, post workout and a pre workout. Okay, and they and chose got, you obviously, you know, because you're well known in Europe. Yeah, I'm the one that started the company with my business partner, Amir here. Okay. Yeah. My own company. Okay, so you're an entrepreneur and a boxer. Yeah. Any of your foundation? Yeah, so yeah, you spend yeah, a lot of time. I see it on Instagram all the time. Yeah, so we just launched uh, BadujackFoundation.org <coughs> uh, today, actually. So uh, people can check out the website, what we're doing, and uh, you know, help the refugees and you know donate if, they, if you want to. Uh, yeah. What, what's the name of the website? BadujackFoundation.org. Thank you. But what, what inspired you to be a philanthropist? You know, some guys don't care about giving back. It seems like it's, it's something that you know, I'm a Muslim, and that's my duty to, to do that. And uh, if you have, if you in this platform that I have, you know, being a world champion, uh, why not? This is uh, we should use this platform to for something bigger than boxing. Did, did your faith get uh, deeper? The deeper and deeper you got into your career as a fighter? Yeah, yeah definitely. Why is that? Not sure. It is God's God's will. So I'm uh, yeah, getting closer to my religion every day. It just it just seems kind of more common than uncommon in boxing that fighters have that kind of faith or relationship with something. You know. Yeah, definitely. So, but you've had a couple of draws and you know. Bad scorecards, what have you, but yeah. does it motivate you to get, kind of get guys out there a little bit earlier now? Definitely, it's, it's politics in boxing. I had, I'm an honest guy, so I had one fight, my first fight on Showbox, which was right before I signed with Floyd, 2012. For Brand? Brand, exactly. Texas that, was, that, that was a close fight. If they would have given me one draw, that fight, I wouldn't be mad. It could have gone either way or a draw. I'm honest. That was a close fight. If that was an eight rounder. I didn't have no experience really, but I'm fine with one draw on my record, but not not three, three and a half. Do you go back and watch me try to figure out what the judges are looking at when you fight? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, there's nothing I can do. I, I'm just trying to be positive and think uh, about the future and stuff, not look backward. Did you um, watch the hot rod fight that Marcus Brown had? That's a lot of fight. A lot of people thought Brown probably lost that fight. I mean, it's, he's a different style than you, obviously, but. Yeah, I saw a little bit of that fight. Yeah, yeah, I did. he definitely lost that fight, but I mean, it's not his fault. Like I said, it's politics. But do you see any weaknesses from that fight that you can exploit yourself? Mm, we'll see. Saturday. <laughs> do, do you like fighting? Prefer fighting southpaws over uh, orthodox fighters, or? It, it make no difference. I, I, my last four fights, I think three of them were southpaws, except Nathan Clipper. So yeah, I have no problem fighting southpaws or right hand. Same difference. Are you the type of guy that comes in the ring with a game plan or do you kind of adjust as the rounds go on? Uh, a little bit of both. Of course. I have a great trainer, Lou DeVal. You always have a great game plan. And, you know, of course, you got to adjust. Everything is not going to be exactly like it is on video or paper or whatever. So, of course, that's one of my biggest strengths to be able to adjust. How have you gotten good at adjusting over the years? It seems like you've been able to adapt to fights a lot quicker than you used to. My trainer, Lou DeVal. I mean, I'm a great trainer. What makes, team. Lou, what makes Lou a great trainer, you, you think? I mean, he's been there. He's, he's been a world champion. He's been on the biggest stage before Roy Jones. He's been a, a WBA champion. So, first of all, I mean, that's, a, that's the main thing that I like. A guy that's been there, not just in a regular small fight. He's been on the highest level. So, yeah, he, he knows a lot about